corridor. Let me see your hand. Sean Gathright was one of the shooters, if not the most reckless, and his name has been inextricably connected to Fulio's demise, from using his mother's car for the hit to getting caught for having firearms in it, and even attempting to climb out of a ceiling in an interrogation room. This narrative is getting crazier and crazier, and it was all captured in 4K, Sean Gathright made a 4K catch. Now that Fulio's killers are in prison, more bizarre details are starting to surface online. And the most recent information suggests that these individuals were merely amateurs. It transpires that Sean Gathright drove a vehicle that could be readily linked to him. It appears as though they made no effort to avoid detection. And this is how things transpired so you can see how careless they were. Two automobiles, a silver Chevy Cruze and a black Chevy Impala, carried Isaiah Chance, Alicia Andrews, Sean Gathright, Davion Murphy, and Rashad Murphy on their journey from Jacksonville to Tampa. The Silver Cruise belonged to Isaiah Chance and his girlfriend, Alicia Andrews, while Sean Gathright drove the black Impala that was registered in his mother's name. The internet was unable to suppress its outrage at the carelessness of Fulio's killers. Read one remark. These gotta be the world's dumbest criminals. Bro must hate his mom because why would you use your mom's car to go commit a murder? This is insane. However, that wasn't their only foolish action. They neglected to mention how many security cameras there are in Tampa. They were seen on 4K several times, even when Fulio was being killed. The defendants started tracking their target as soon as they got to Tampa. Through his Instagram account, Fulio made his appearances at Teaser's Gentleman's Club and Truth 18 Nightclub Public. Chance and Andrews drove the silver Chevy Cruze driven by Jones and his crew to both sites. Every move was filmed by surveillance cameras. Chance and Andrews exited their car at Teaser's Gentleman's Club and Truth 18 Nightclub. Chance was observed using what turned out to be Alicia Andrews' cell phone. Call detail logs revealed that Andrews was speaking with Sean Gathright, whose phone was located in the second car, a black Chevy Impala. As the defendants pursued Fulio and his group to the house's two suites, the tension reached a breaking point. Before leaving the scene, Isaiah Chance and Alicia Andrews' silver Chevy Cruze passed the parked cars of the victims twice. This gave the order to move in for the kill for the black Chevy Impala piloted by Sean Gathright and carrying Davion Murphy and Rashad Murphy. You can see the shooters are getting in position for their planned out murder. And with a handgun and two rifles, they started fire, murdering Fulio as soon as they were in position. Fulio's automobile took off at full speed, running away. Too late. And they are shooting at Charles now. And you can see that he's the passenger in that car that's moving and trying to flee. The defendants overestimated the potency of contemporary monitoring technologies, believing they had carried out the ideal plan. Following the murder, the group withdrew to their Airbnb, which they had reserved for June 22nd, 24. A ring camera at the front door of the Airbnb recorded important scenes from the defendant's film. Isaiah Chance was spotted leaving the house momentarily after the murder, with a champagne flute in his left hand. In the parking lot, Devian Murphy was observed carrying a backpack. Later, he passed the camera as he returned via the main door. Chance and Gathright were captured on video with their faces and activities captured in high definition as they repeatedly passed the ring camera. The same outfit that Alicia Andrews wore during the murder was also seen on her way out of the Airbnb. Piecing together the chronology of events and identifying the culprits required the use of these photos. The inquiry continued after that. Following the murder, detectives followed Sean Gathright's movements using video evidence from surveillance cameras. Gathright showed up at a family member's residence around 12 hours after the murder, dressed entirely in black just like what was seen on security footage. He spent a few hours inside the house before coming outside at approximately 7.30 p.m. Gathright was observed using a rag to wipe or clean the exterior and interior door handles of the car while using a cell phone. Before driving off in the same forerunner, he also moved a number of suitcases into the garage where a 2004 gold forerunner was hidden. In a few of weeks, this car would prove to be the group's undoing, leading the FBI right to the killer's doorsteps. A few days later, Gathright was taken into custody in the Forerunner, and there is a claim that he turned on his comrades because the police were at the killer's door in less than a month. Sean leaks information. Did Sean turn on his friends? Your mind will be blown by what transpired three days following Fulio's murder. Sheriff's deputies in Jacksonville noticed a gold Forerunner driving across the city on June 26. The windows of the car were darkly tinted, making it hard to see who was inside. The patrol lights on the unmarked sheriff's car came on, alerting the motorist to stop. When the driver complied, the car stopped. 
the deputies had no idea that the stop would bring them one step closer to solving Julio Fulio's murder. Sean Gathright, age 18, was identified as the driver of the Gold Forerunner. The deputies could smell marijuana strongly coming from inside the car as soon as they got close to it. Sean, nevertheless, denied ever using or possessing marijuana. The deputies understood they had probable cause to search the car despite his denial. Sean was instructed to exit the Forerunner and wait in the rear while the deputies conducted a thorough check of the car. They found a little bag with mushroom and marijuana traces as they started their search they discovered a semi-automatic Glock 19 handgun in the middle console. Red flags were raised right away when the firearm was discovered, but what they discovered next would be even more concerning. The deputies found multiple bags of ammo, gun components, and accessories in the back seats of the Forerunner. The huge amount of ammunition and the parts of a handgun indicated that Sean was not your typical adolescent. The deputies realized they had made a significant discovery. Sean was apprehended and placed under arrest right away for an interview he was taken to the Crime Gun Intelligence Center office. The deputies were hopeful that this arrest would provide important information that would enable them to break open the investigation. Sean was freed, but he was taken into custody at a Jacksonville shopping center just 24 hours later. Open the car door! Let me see your hands! Back up to the sound of my voice. Yep. Stop right there, lift your shirt up. Turn, do a 360. The investigation's direction would be altered by useful intelligence that the Jacksonville sheriffs obtained that same day. The evidence suggested a murderous plot, and Sean's apprehension provided the crucial element to reveal this fresh development. This intelligence led to the rapid execution of a search warrant. Investigators got to a house on the north side of Jacksonville. They'd been told that Alicia Andrews and Isaiah Chance were inside the house. After encircling the residence, the detectives started issuing verbal orders over a public address system. Isaiah Chance, this is a Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. We are here for a driveway. We have a warrant for your arrest. Come to your front door with nothing in your hands. All right, go to your knees. Put your hands behind your back. Now turn around. Put your hands behind your back. For 15 to 20 minutes, they demanded that the occupants surrender. An important development was the evidence discovered in Sean's car and the arrest of Isaiah and Alicia. With three suspects in custody, the detectives' puzzle pieces began to fit together. Though the investigation was far from finished, law enforcement's tenacious efforts were starting to bear fruit. But the tale doesn't stop there. As the search for the last suspect went on, Rashad Murphy came into greater focus. With the help of U.S. Marshals, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office traced Murphy's activities and pieced together his whereabouts. They arrived at the Collins Preserve Apartments, in Jacksonville's Ortega neighborhood as a result of their efforts. SWAT teams were called to the Collins Preserve Apartments one day after the first three suspects were taken into custody. To stop Murphy from escaping, the SWAT squad set up a cordon around the flat where they thought he was hiding. According to reports, Rashad Murphy was unwilling to give up and had barricaded himself inside the house during FaceTime with his girlfriend, holding a gun to his head. The dramatic operation came to a conclusion just after midnight when Rashad Murphy surrendered after a tense confrontation. Keep throwing! Hello, towards me! However, there was more drama in the case than this. It turns out that Sean attempted a really funny escape while he was under arrest. Sean was put in an interrogation room and according to police documents, tried to jump out of the ceiling to get away from jail. The accused got up on a table and attempted to take down the ceiling tiles in the room. The drama never stops and more arrests are bound to happen, according to Fulio's mother. Do you believe more people will be arrested for what happened to your son? Yes. So more than the, the five that are on the screen right now. Does she have knowledge that we do not? Time will tell. If you like this video, you can view more like it by clicking on the boxes that are currently playing on your screen. If you like this video, kindly hit the subscribe. That's all I have for you today, for the time being.